Have we got a number yet? A number for what? A number of students that will be going to the increase. I mean, I see they're still transferring. Still transferring. Okay, at this time I would like to call the meeting of the Gilmer County Board of Education to order. Uh, this is Hurley. Present. Mr. Pritt. Here. Carl Armour. Here. Tom Rapper. Here. All here in the county court, and I'll leave this in the place to see you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Delegation question policy. I'm going to stay seated since everybody is on in front of me. The delegation policy that was tabled, I'm still wanting an answer to why it is still being tabled, so we don't know whether we have three to five minutes or how long we have to talk. I got a, a call from one of the uh, citizens saying I only had four and a half minutes the last time instead of the whole, you can tell it by the thing on the video, I suppose. But I still would like to have that policy know why it wasn't tabled. I haven't got an answer. I asked the question about the technology inventory that was not used. Again, why can't the Career Center students repair class have technology that they need that if you don't need it up here or in any other schools in the county and it needs repair, why can't it not be sent down to the class down there to be repaired? I started asking this two years ago and I'm still asking the same question. Repair class, if you destroy it or give it away, uh, technology pieces, they can use these pieces. And I'm still asking for that to be done for those students down there. As far as the third thing I have is truancy. The, uh, the Board of Education's uh, member, Mr. Linger, I guess he went into a tirade against Gilbert County saying that he reported that the news media, that 50% of our students were truant. And uh, that means that out of the 409 students that we have, 204 of them at least have to be out to be truant. And that's half. That's just plain bull, in my opinion. We have always had above 95% attendance rate and still have. Our students are not truants. Uh, we can tell Mr. Langer and the Gazette that if you dare, Mr. President, I find that the students, it's outrageous to even imply that our students are truants, because they definitely are not. I don't hear anyone in the administration defending this or asking about it. Mr. Armour asked to have it put on the agenda to find out why. I get, keep getting calls from parents asking me why our students are truant, who are they? And if half of them are truant, why are they? And I'd like to know the same question. I uh, want a retraction for the citizens and the children of Gilmer County. I don't think this is right, that we just sit there and let the rest of the West Virginia think that our kids are truant. If you agree with me, you could be signifying at least shaking your head or something. Uh, now, as far as the budget's concerned, uh, to pass a budget that you know that you didn't have any part in is using one of Mrs. Butcher's famous words, unconscionable. You will soon be in the same situation that Calhoun is in right today. No doubt about it. They did not have any part in the accessing their budget down there. They didn't know what they were in the red or when they were in the red. If you all do not know the same thing, you're going to be out of money. And I know why when the state makes their OEPA report and says that you're out of money. You really need to have part in that budget and know how much is left in our general fund, not the capital fund. That is gone. 
it's the general fund and what we've got left at the end of the year that we have to get our students. Also, please take care of our students that, uh, before the needs of uh, putting your money in to uh, luxury offices or making sure that the administration has easy parking, which I haven't heard one anybody up the board ask, ask for easy parking or new offices at all. Don't worry about one person needing to see a superintendent because they can always bring them downstairs. And forget about the nine years. Don't forget about the nine years that Normantown Elementary School has been at school in those ten cans. And close to the road, as the OPA report says, is very dangerous. Or the three elementary uh, schools have been without a fifth grade teacher. If we have money to move the Board of Education office to make more room for parking, for a few administrators to work in a, a, a very nice place or luxurious place so we have more room. I don't know why we need more room. We've got less students. But if we're going to have the money to do that, we surely would have money to get fifth grade teachers for our students. Take care of the students first. Worry about the good parking for the administration second. And uh, see, uh, uh, Mr. President, if, if you can remember the Board of Education to take a vote to hire a lawyer, if you want to against me, that is perfectly all right. Go at it. Thank you. All right, we're down to item four, consent agenda. And I would entertain a, uh, a motion to approve uh, with the, if you, unless you want to abstract uh, certain items to be dealt with separately. Mr. President, I have questions on everything except school volunteers. There are none on that, but I do have a question on, I believe, each item. Uh, we could discuss that even under, including it under uh, all the other items. Well, I prefer that we wrote that an agenda out individually. All right. We can, we'll then entertain a motion to approve everything except item F on the consent agenda. Do I have a second? So we have a motion and a second. Second. All right. Now, discussion on any of the items. I'll start with minutes if it's all right. Speaking to the special meeting, uh, Mr. Secretary, I'd like to offer a couple of corrections. One is uh, Dr. Simmons' first name is spelled incorrectly. It has an S at the end of Williams. It says Williams instead of William. That needs to be corrected. Uh, in the roll call, both attorneys who were present from Dinsmore and Shoal have been left out. Furthermore, um, both Dr. Armour and I uh, asked to have our objection to adjournment uh, recorded in the minutes, and that was not included. So I would uh, make a motion when it is appropriate to have those amend corrected and amended. Now what is it specifically that you want to correct? Well, I would like to start with your first name to be corrected. I would like to have the lawyers that were present included in the well, roll call. That doesn't bother me. Well, I understand that. It's just that it would be correct, mm -hmm. the spelling. Uh, the roll call does not include the two attorneys that were present, or out of the others present. There were two at that special meeting. There Jason one. Long and Jason Long wasn't in the meeting. He was present at the meeting. No, he was in the, in the office with Judy Stonick for talking to Judy. He wasn't in the meeting. Okay. Well, Jason Long's name, or the other attorney, I have never did learn his name, is not here. So he's not on this document anywhere, and he was here at the meeting. So he needs to be added, please. And I would like to have my objection to the adjournment uh, without discussion uh, recorded in these minutes, as I requested at that time. When I checked on that, uh, Mrs. Hurley, when you voted no, that was your objections. Mm -hmm. Well, I do believe I'm, I'm permitted to have an explanation of my objection recorded, so <coughs> I requested um, an explanation of a no vote if I asked for that. Uh, if you would check on that, I would greatly appreciate it. But we definitely need to make sure that that attorney's presence is recorded in these minutes and it's not there. Um, also, I wanted to note that uh, I didn't, I could not find my copy of the uh, LSIC meeting for Norman Town when we had that disciplinary hearing. So I 
read it on the free press, and I thought, that doesn't look right. And so I asked for a copy from the office to make certain that I had the correct copy, because you never know copy. And uh, it does say that we voted in executive session. And I believe if the tape is checked that that is incorrect, of course we don't vote in executive session. But it does say that. It says that I made a motion and it was seconded and passed by all of us. And it says it happened in executive session. And I do recall uh, that the attorney, who was very helpful, did point out to us that we needed to come out of executive session, which we did. We voted. And then at that time, we were told if we wished to go back in and have a private conversation, we could and we did. I'll check on that, but you can vote on expulsion hearing and executive session for students. Really? I have not seen that documented. I'd like to see the code where that shows that I can vote in executive session. To my knowledge, that's inappropriate. But if you can show me that code, I'll be totally accepting of it. Okay, anything else? Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, well, I finished with the minutes. Let's go right ahead. I have some more Let's go right ahead. Uh, under new business, it says uh, Tom Ratliff moved the whole special meeting regarding the county office meeting after research is conducted. I thought that what we voted on was to have a special public meeting. At least that's what I thought when I voted. So would you please check the record? I think uh, Mr. Ratliff said uh, I think the word public was in there, not just a special meeting for the board. At least that's the way I recall. Which I note? There's three or four meetings there. Which meeting are you talking about? He's talking about it in the May when it was voted on to uh, take, is that, are, am I, are you not Carl, when it was voted on to the regular meeting and it was voted well, to uh, take this is, I'm looking at the May 18th. Right, May. And I think this referred to the June 1st meeting, or the meeting that occurred, and I think Mr. Ratliff made a motion that uh, whatever the meeting we were calling it, it would be a public meeting. Yes, I didn't understand it to be special, to be quite honest. I thought, well, I thought that we voted. Meeting. I, I, I thought we had voted to have a meeting, and I recall Mr. Devano saying, "Would you care if I had a special meeting?" And I remember saying personally, "No," but it's the you know the board. It's up to everyone. You already but, have your meeting dates set. Those are your regular meeting dates. Any time you meet after those meeting dates for special meetings. I understand that, but I mean, we, I don't think exactly we voted for have. to have a special meeting. You had said that you would try to get the attorneys to hurry to get it done. You didn't know when they complete their work. And I would call a special meeting when it's time for them oh, okay. if they have all the work done completed. I wasn't clear that we were very special. Special meeting is a public meeting also. Right. But anyway, I thought what we that the motion was it would be a public meeting and that's the way I voted. So you want to check on it? Fine. Well, a special meeting is a public meeting. And either public can show that meeting. Anytime you have a special meeting, you can. And if you want to discuss the same thing that, that you don't want the public to be aware of, you have the right to win an executive session. I think traditionally we've had public meetings. They've been uh, advertised for a long period of time, and they'd be held in a place like the uh, senior center where we would anticipate a cross section of uh, public. Uh, but anything else? Let's see. Yeah, I just think anything. Just a second. I think I have another one. When we did have the, the uh, special meeting on the on uh, the first of June. Uh, there was a uh, segment of that meeting where I requested that my uh, formal concern about the way the meeting uh, was going uh, would be included in the minutes. And I can't recall uh, verbatim what I said, but I asked for my concern to be in the uh, agenda. So would you please check on that? And I think Mrs. Hurley, if I remember correctly, I made that request. I think you made a similar request. I did. Okay, Misty, do you have any items? Um, no, I don't. Uh, only um, that I was absent on the meeting of uh, June 1st and that I would have to uh, pull that meeting minutes out to, to not vote on that. Okay, any, anything else? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor of approving, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. No. Uh, is this the minutes? Just the minutes? Or well, this was everything except school no. volunteers, which you No, I mean, no, I just, we just finished discussing the minutes. I haven't gone through the other items yet that I said I had something on every one of them. I had a question. I mean, I just was waiting for everyone to discuss the minutes, and then 
Actually, I wanted to make a motion to amend those minutes as requested, the special meeting minutes, to include the attorney. Well, I, I'm sorry, I assumed you were finished. I just took the minutes. I was just waiting for Dr. Armour had something on minutes. I, I, I had said to preface it that I had a question on each item on the consent agenda. That's why I asked to have it individualized, Mr. Senator. Well, you asked to have F individualized, rolled out, and discussed on its own. Now, F is school volunteers, and there's yeah. nothing on school volunteers. That was my statement. Okay. Well, you that was the only it, one I didn't have. You wanted it pulled out, though. No. Well, there's nothing I can say on it because we have no school volunteers. Okay. Everything well, else I had a question on. Right. Does that then cover your discussion of F? It's of F. I didn't have any discussion of it. She made a motion. That what the motion was made second by Tom. A, B, C, D, E, and G will be discussed. Yeah. She has questions on it. F would be a separate motion. Yeah. Except this. Because F actually, we have no school volunteers listed, so there's really nothing to make a motion on F other than, I mean, there's nothing to approve. Uh, my next item, I'll just continue it that way. I'll just go down the list. Budget supplements and transfers. I did have one question, and it's on budget revision. Um, I believe it's 179. It's to transfer title one 2015 grants. Uh, and the transfer goes over to instructional software. I won't read the whole thing. To be used for the core click software access to the three elementary schools for the upcoming 2015-16. And really, uh, I know I was I couldn't call you this week, Mr. Bonner. I would have just called and asked you to ask him for this. You were on vacation. But it's $4,500, and I was just not familiar that we can move money at this time in, for the next school year. So I was just a little bit concerned about that. You can move money right now because you're going to be moving on these budget transfers and everything right now. You can still move money around. Well, you can move money around, yes. Mm -hmm. But this is specifically dedicated for the next school year. And I wasn't familiar, that, I was not aware that we could. Programs going to be run next school year. I understand that. And at, when the June 30 closes, that money, I presume anything will be carried over into the appropriate line items. But I did not know you could move it in this budget year to hold for the next budget year. So if you would just ask Mrs. Brown, please, uh, I'll do some checking as well. But I, it just was an odd thing for me to see, and I, and I didn't quite understand that. Um, on the financial statement, treasurer's report, I just wanted to note one thing. I, I want to say, well, two things. Actually, three things. One is thank you so much um, for the report series that I received was so informative and so helpful, and I really appreciate it. Uh, it's more of what I'm accustomed to looking at, and it is very informative, and I hope that I, we can continue to get this data. It will enable us to be able to follow the funds uh, much more easily. So I do appreciate that. But I have a question, or, or a comment I'd like to make, and it, it is regarding um, prior year revenues and the current year-to-date revenues. Prior year, uh, we have a difference there. This year, we're taking in less, over a million less. And I was wondering, actually, it's one uh, one million forty-eight, one million four hundred eight thousand eight hundred forty-two dollars. Okay, and I'm just. Concerned? Do you have any, can you, any type of idea of why we have such a huge drop in revenue this year? Again, Mrs. Hurley, as I said since July, you guys can ask me these questions. Uh, you can go through that and pick out all this stuff out. If you have questions when you receive the budget on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, please call me. I know you said I was on vacation, which is correct, but I have a voice message. You could have left a voice message. I well, voice I have any intention of disrupting you on vacation. I could. No, you wouldn't. I just left a voice message on my phone because I checked it. I could have had these answers for you. Well, I, I didn't really think about that, Mr. Devon. Don't be contentious. I well, just, I didn't. I was trying I'm to be polite. You, I've been you that since I understand July. you were on vacation, I and that's why I did not get these in earlier. You know, but that is a question I would like to know. I'm a little concerned. It's a million forty-eight eight forty-three that were down in the year-to-date uh, revenues, and I'm just a little concerned about it. Is all you know. If we have any uh, 
where that money has gone, so you know, or why we're not receiving that amount. There has to be a major change that has happened. I just don't know what it is. On accounts payable, I did want to ask you about that hundred and thirteen thousand dollar check that we paid to Lewis County. That it shows, I believe, that it came from the SBA, and I'm not quite clear on that. That's the money we owe to Lewis County for the Leading Creek School. Is that the hundred and thirteen thousand for the slip? Hundred thirteen thousand was what we owed. What this board obligated. That's all I know. Was one hundred thirteen thousand was obligated to Lewis County, and I had them check right and left on that, and this was exactly what we owed. So it must have, it must have gone to the SBA. Maybe I, I thought Mr. Mike and Shepard sent that, and maybe he did. But it must, if he had, perhaps it went to the SBA, and then because it's coming out of SBA revenues here in the county. So perhaps the SBA went sent it directly back to, to us. Lewis County Board of Education. They billed us. And sent they billed us. Okay, okay, that's good to know. All right, I hadn't been clear on that. Uh, I've got a couple other questions on accounts paid. Mr. Um, President, I have a question about the uh, accounts of payable, and, and uh, I keep seeing each month an entry uh, thirteen thousand dollars for Risa. And I know you have uh, offered to let people come in and uh, examine the material. The bills have been submitted and that. I can look at that bill and I wouldn't have any idea what we're getting for 13000 And I just urge you to try to consider uh, having someone from RESA or, or someone on your staff to come in and tell us what we're getting for that $13,000 a month. That equates to $156,000 uh, a year. It may be a great thing we're getting, but it would help us understand where the money's going if we could get some money to involve it. You have a check through RESA. You have interventionists through the RESA. You have a psychologist that we've employed through RESA. So all those are contracts and services that you got. Well, the reason I ask that one reason, I walk back here, I don't know whether that's the uh, room where people have their lunch or what, and around the table, there are instructional materials scattered around there, and I saw RESA uh, terminology on it. And on one wall, there were uh, well, <coughs> postings of what was being covered in there. And maybe Mrs. Butcher can help us out here. But they had sequencing, cause and effect modeling, and categorization, and uh, activities of that type, and it'd be great to know what kind of training are we getting? It's very impressive. There'll be that. a training tomorrow that starts here that's called Thinking Maps. It, that's that exactly we're right. I, I, we're producing to, the, to the, our staff. I know. At as least soon as all that's got done, and when we do, we come back in August, we're going to tell you exactly why, what we're going to put into our school system. But that Thinking Map is where four, four, three of our elementary schools bought into, and that's that's what we're doing, the Thinking Maps. It was very impressive to see what it played out in there. <laughs> Well, I had more questions, please. Uh, on page 40 of the accounts payable, there are two checks to Quill Corporation totaling $100,835. Uh, $830. Uh, $35. If they're for HP Touch Smart, is that the computers yes. that we purchased? Mm -hmm. So we bought them from Quill? Yes. Okay. Well, you through. bought them through Risa. Risa has the APA pricing, which is approved by the state board. And you bought it through them. Through Risa, but getting the price, but it was Quill Corporation that provided the computers. Quill's on, on the APA pricing. Okay. I didn't know that. Uh, and the other question was I noticed on page 41 um, to Quill Corporation $10,134.32 for gray mist storage part 24 units. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's to put the computers in to charge when they're not being used in the classroom. I thought perhaps it had something to do with computers, but I, I didn't know. It wasn't very. And I also wanted to ask you one more thing on AP, and I'll leave you alone. Um, it was regarding the audit. I saw a bill for $10,940 for audit from a company named Fight, which I had known just from my research was the one who had done it. Um, did we bid that company? 
bid them out at, uh, and you go with them. You go with them with the state. The state gives you about four or five auditors that you can bid with. And we put a, they put a bid in to come in. <coughs> the state did the bid for us? No, we do our own bid, but they tell us who is approved by the state. Oh, I understand they have to be state approved auditors. Everyone does for a local governmental agency. And this is a company that was lost bid to bid. Okay. I didn't know that we'd gone to bid for audit. That was all I was. Okay, thank you very much. All right, now are we ready to approve the consent agenda uh, with the exception of school volunteers, for which there are none? I've got one more thing, and I will stop. Field trips. Um, I noted on the field trips, of course, at this late date, they've all been taken. But I do have uh, one question. And it was on the one uh, for the sixth grade uh, field trip to Calvin Gilmer Career Center. There's, uh, I guess, Sand Fork provided the bus. So is there any other funding that was necessary for that? Because it shows no expense. I, would, I presume we paid the bus driver. Mm -hmm. okay. Sand Fork has the money through their, their account. Okay, so That's Sand Fork. something that we agreed that we would like to have. Well, I brought it up at Calvin Career Center. Right. With our dormers there, we would like to have our sixth grade elementary students to go over and see what's really available for them. Oh, I've been following that in the minutes, and that's a very good idea, certainly, because they're going to the seventh grade the next year, and that's a wonderful program. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And also on the uh, FFA career development events in Morgantown, which was 6-2 to 6-4, I'd just like to note to you that this form, it, it's already been done, but the form is not complete. It has no departure, return time, no charges. So you might want to make sure you have that completed form. Does it say uh, pick a van? No, it doesn't say anything. It's just uh, it says student will compete. They took a van. They, if they take a van, they just load up right here in school and go. They had a the services of a substitute teacher, and their chapter text test on this will be six ten. Uh, it's totally relevant to our agricultural careers. It's just there's no indication of anything. Here, so you might want to check. If they took a van, not a school bus, you won't have it on there. Right. They take the county van. They normally put it on here, though, don't they, that they would be taking the van? They take it to the trip. Oh, no, Ben. I have a question. I, I check this uh, student transfer list each month, and I've had two calls this week about the, the, the transfer. I just wonder. What is the total number of uh, 12 people who have transferred to Glenville who otherwise would have transferred? Do we have a count on that? No, but what we're going to do is uh, uh, probably the next couple weeks sit down with uh, our Tim's person at the county office to find out how many new people have transferred into Glenville or Sanford or Normanton, whatever they have, and then we're going to have to sit down and look at staffing. And that's that's basically where we are. Uh, I know there's some close numbers that at Glenville, especially with the choice some of the choice students coming in, that we'll have to look. Yeah. And then there's also even our outlying schools like Sanford and Normantown that we might have to look at additional staffing there, depending on the numbers. The numbers are going to dictate where we go and what we do. Sure. Sure. I have one question. We have one student at the top of that list. Uh, it's pre-K student. Doesn't show where they're transferring from. Pre K? Yeah, at the top of the list. I'll check on pre K. Yeah, it's transferring from is blank and it does show they are transferring to Glenville. It might be somebody new coming in. Well, I didn't know if it was an out county or whatever, but there's no indication. <coughs> and I don't want to give their names. Okay. Are we ready for a motion to approve? and a second uh, to approve. Do we now, are we now ready for a vote? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. With exception Let's have the a show of hands. With the exception of the meeting, I wasn't present at. Okay. All right, those opposed, same sign. Nay. Okay. Motion passes. Item five, new business. The attorney's not here right now, so we have to move on. Okay. 
Item 6, Superintendent's Information Action. You all talked about preventive maintenance. Uh, Joe and I have been working on, on a uh, program that's statewide funded. Uh, and I'll let uh, Mr. Frazier explain a little bit to you about it so you can understand what our preventive maintenance program is going to be. Will we stay in shit? Yes, Whatever you're talking about. Um, the, new, the new program is called School Dude, and it's an online program, and it is a preventive maintenance program. Unfortunately, in our county, for years with maintenance, we've had to do reactive maintenance just due to our older buildings and things like that. But uh, it is a preventive maintenance program, and uh, what basically happens, all of our units on top of our roofs, all of our air conditioner units, all of our RTUs, all of our freezers, all of our refrigerators, all of our water fountains, uh, all of that is entered into this system, and you set a plan, you set a schedule of when it, it then it, next year, say a year away, it will come back and tell us, hey, the fan needs changed, or the coils need cleaned. It puts, it puts all of our equipment on a schedule and on a unit that we set. We obviously use Jess and Steve's advice. Uh, Jess and Steve are two maintenance guys, Jess and Vanny, Steve Rollins. Uh, they give us all the information. They gather, gather us everything. Uh, Mr. Devano kindly gave us the services of Becky in the office, uh, Becky Minnick. She helps input the data. They collect the data of anything new we get, any of the RTUs. She and I, she mostly, I admit she mostly, enters the data. And then what we'll have come next, next year when things are due to be cleaned again, coils, whether it's belts, whatever preventive maintenance we need to do on, on all those systems in, they'll be on a schedule and it will come up and tell us when it's time to do those. So it's really, it is a neat system. Becky and I set through a training with Jerry Milliken from the State Department and uh, Steve and Jess, you know, they, they were used to another program and had to come from that program into this program. So at first, they had to figure out a lot and they, they could compare programs. Becky and I were really at an advantage we weren't used to the old program, so we only learned the new program. So for us, it was very user-friendly. Uh, we were able to use it without any issues. It is, uh, you can get on and piece it together and figure it out. So I think it's going to be very good for us. Uh, how much information and, and stuff like that that we have in there, how much data we have in there, also helps us out with our MIP projects. The SBA is going to look at things like that to make sure we're in our data, to make sure we're doing preventive maintenance, and that... They, they are behind this school do this preventive maintenance program also. So I think it's going to be great for us. I think it's going to be good for our county. Uh, maintenance overall, you know, uh, as, as the closure of Troy or whatever, you know, it's one less building to maintain. It, it should just be getting better, and we should be able to do more preventive maintenance. And then, you know, in the next year or two when we're down to, to two or three buildings, uh, maintenance should become a lot better in our, in our county. With, with a manpower of two and, and lesser buildings, we should be able to do a better job and do more preventive maintenance. And I think this program will help us along that way. Mr. Frazier, does this extend to the buses, or is that a separate? No, it, it, it is separate. The buses are not on this. Now, what, what we have to do with the buses, we have to keep a, a maintenance calendar. And, and I schedule that calendar every year, and we have to have it posted at the garage. And our bus inspectors, when they come in, they inspect our buses twice a year. And they want to see that posting and that schedule. The way we do it, I, I, our mechanic doesn't have to, but I want him to see each bus at least once a month. So basically, if you look at that, you're going to see bus 52, bus 53, and it's going to be one bus a day to get through that month. Some of our shorter months, you'll see two buses a day and things like that. That will include our vans. He does look at our vans, and, and he looks at all that. But it is separate, but we do have a maintenance schedule, maintenance calendar for our school bus fleet. Is this a statewide program, or is this something that we have sought ourselves? I mean, is this something that was a program we were able to gain with little cost, or? The SBA bought the program, school dude, okay. and it's been offered to all the counties. We decided to go ahead and start using it, so it's free to charge to us right, right now. School Board Association? School no, board. School Building Authority. Oh, school Building Authority. Yeah. Yeah, with our new schools, of course, you're going to have a lot better tools. So yes, and what what will happen if they start putting units in the in the new schools? Jess and Steve will, will bring back in out of the data, the information, model number, serial number, everything on that machine, and then she'll. It's heavy on the front end of the time. You know, you've got to input the data, but once you've got the data in there, uh, then it then it's pretty nice. So. 
as we build Gilmer Elementary, there'll be a lot of data to put in there. And, and we'll work on that and get it together. And then, uh, but then it's all going to be there, you know, for the existence of the school or the existence of that equipment, all that data is in there. So it's heavy on the front end as far as the work input, but as you go, it's there. So, and really, we entered the schools we have now in just a couple of days. Uh, we, we asked Steve and Jess for the training. We asked them to provide us a list of equipment. And Becky and I each had a list, and we went through it that day. I went back to Steve and Jess. I said, give us more. Give us everything you have. Let's get it in there. And, uh, you know, we were a little nervous how much time it might take. Everybody's got enough on their plate the way it is. But I think even Becky, Becky's done a tremendous job. I can't brag on her enough with this. Uh, you hand her that list, and she's going to have it in that day. Uh, so it's really going quicker, and I think even she would say, I don't want to speak for her, but I think she would say it's not near as bad as what she might have thought. I think she thought at first it was going to be 30 minutes every day or an hour out of every day, and it's not that. It might be an hour one day, the day we get the list, or a couple hours the day we get the list. And we've told her just to work on it as she can, and, and that I've helped as I can, but it, it, it's really not too bad, or not near as bad as both of us thought it might be. The faster the data entry skills, the faster it gets. That's correct. Yeah. And Becky's definitely faster Very than I. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'd just like to say uh, one thing. Uh, I, I do recall that uh, Mr. Ratliff was a, an advocate for coming up with a maintenance plan. So I think it's a fantastic thing you've done. Uh, it, if you look at the uh, audit report, there's some mentioning in there about we needed to upgrade. Mm -hmm. Looks like you've taken care of it. And it is an upgrade. I mean, let's acknowledge there was one in place. The fire board did have a program in place. This just sounds like a, a maybe a faster or efficient upgrade. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and to, you know, just to the maintenance staff in general, Jess and Steve, there's only so much they can do, and there was so much reactive maintenance in our school system. I'm not putting any any building down or anything like that, but just the situation we were in, there was so much reactive yeah. maintenance that you didn't really have time, and we're just now, with this year, we did a lot of preventive maintenance. I think Jess and Steve, again, I don't like to speak for people. Obviously, they're doing the work, but I think they would sit here and tell you that we did more preventive maintenance this school year than what we've been able to do in the past. And I think that that's what I meant by the trend. I think it'll just keep you getting better and better right. uh, as we go. All right, thank you. I also want you to update a little bit the MIP project, which Mr. Frazier talked about, was bid out and didn't receive. We're gonna replace all the units that's in there in the bid, plus the offers and everything else like that. We have several thousand dollars left over on the bid, so we're going about looking about upgrading some more units as we go. Uh, the bids come in pretty low uh, for us. We were kind of surprised by it, but uh, there is additional funds that we'll look at placing a couple more extra units that we have here, which will help us out. Uh, also, uh, Mr. President, I'd just like to stop a couple little rumors or some concerns that people have that the State Board did renew my contract about a year and a half ago, so I'll be with you all here next year. Yay! <laughs> all right. He said he didn't renew his contract. Uh, one thing, Mr. Superintendent, there's no shortage of this rumor. <laughs> I learned when I was in Charleston, a rumor was put out for a reason to get information going, mm -hmm. but a rumor here has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> okay, let's go on to item seven, reports, discussion, follow-up action. A, Gilmer uh, County, Calhoun County Career Center, Dr. Arnold. Okay, I won't have much to say because the emphasis was on honoring uh, the new graduates. We had a pretty short meeting and we were all excited to uh, learn about the, the uh, ceremony that was coming and that's what we talked about quite a bit. But to give you some of the highlights, um, there was an audit done down there, got a completely clean bill of health, there were no caveats at all in it that anything needed to be watched for, it was uh, very, very uh, well done. Uh, the uh, financial officer, Mr. Minnie, uh, proposed the uh, budget for the next year, and uh, we discussed that for uh, a while. Re and regarding delegations, I've been going, been, been going down there for about a year, and we've never had one delegation, but it's always on the agenda, so I don't know what that reason for was. Okay, uh, I talked a little bit about that simulated workplace the last meeting as an opportunity came up. 
And, you know, at, at times we need to be vigilant for things we can really say positive about West Virginia. And it looks like that we are one of the leaders in the nation, if not the leader in the nation, on this simulated workplace uh, uh, program. One of the concerns was uh, random drug testing. Who can you test? Who is excluded from the testing? And I think some future work has to be done to determine exactly who would be tested. For an example, uh, I just remember, there was even some questioning about FFA is an occupational uh, program. Should, should FFA members be tested? Well, we just dropped it there. I, 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 that's way above me. Okay, what else? Every time we go, uh, we talk about the need for the remedial math teacher, and I think Mr. Devon is going to talk about that later. Uh, we talked about uh, hiring a substitute if the uh, evening ALC instructor is not there, and, and that went through without any problem. And the good news is that the uh, Career Center bought off on Gilmer's calendar. So the bottom line is we don't have any controversy. It seems like everything is going fine. And again, I'll close by mentioning again the Senior Appreciation Day. There must have been oh, approximately uh, 30 of those. And the graduation of the high school you identified, they had a red uh, cord around them, and some of them had a blue and white cord. The ones that had the blue and white cord were on that's all I have to say about the conclusion. Okay, uh, Risa 7, we will not have the uh, June meeting until this Thursday, so I don't have a, a fresh report. However, I would like to say that I've been impressed with the services that Risa 7 does provide the counties in the Risa 7 area. Um, I know that we don't dwell on it, but there's a tremendous savings in a lot of the items that we purchase for our schools. I also know that math teachers have been trained in a lot of the counties uh, to address the new standards. So we do get um, a lot of service from Risa 7. I had the opportunity this week to speak with parents from Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio in several different states, and it might interest you to know their problems are just like ours. Uh, parents who say, we're going to teach our kids regular math. Uh, folks from Columbus, Ohio are dealing with school consolidation. So what we're dealing with in Yomer County is fairly typical of what's going on in public education in many places. They have the same questions that we ask. Okay, item C, plan for Gilmer County career students to take remedial training in English, reading, and math requested by Carl Arnold. Oh, I wasn't aware that I was to uh, come prepared to talk. I had uh, submitted the request uh, earlier to Mr. Albano uh, for a report I, from him, and I, I, I saw that we're going to get. I don't understand your question on remedi remedial training. Okay, remedial. what's the progress on... Uh, uh, whatever needs to be done, what is your plan so that we're not going to have students down at the career center requiring uh, remedial work when they get there? So you want you want what we're doing here in the county? What we what our plan is for eliminating the need for remediation. Well, at the and time, I, I'm sure you have some because you. Yeah, the high school right now does testing of juniors and they provide services for people that can't pass the test on the remedial reading and things of this nature. Uh, mm -hmm. Math. Okay, reading and math. Yeah. Also, we put the interventionists down in your elementary school to start working with our students in reading and math. Mm -hmm. We did the STAR program, which also accesses reading and math. Mm -hmm. So we're we're doing all that. What what threw me when you said the, the career center? I, I don't have any. I can't. I don't control what they do at the career center. I know they have an English teacher, which is not remediation, and they have they're looking for a math teacher, which is not remediation. They actually have embedded credit in there if they do the English and they do the math. Well, we certainly use the word remediation each time we meet. And if you look at the uh, uh, work key score for math and reading, uh, we're in dire need of our students who go there to be prepared. And incidentally, when I go to that career center, I don't go as a spokesperson for 
Gilmer County. I'm there for the Career Center. So I don't know whether it's a problem that's unique to Gilmer County, what uh, contribution Gilmer County has, but there is a problem down there. This and is one of the reasons why they, that the legislature should probably the money for the Lynch and Math teachers at the Career Center. Okay, to help students over there so they can get their English credit or math credit while they're over there instead of losing yeah. that coming back and forth. Yeah, but now, the mediation what program over there, okay. I, don't, I don't know. You'll, yeah. we can, you can discuss it tomorrow with, uh, with the vocational director over, yeah. over there, what he has. But no matter what kind of spin we put on it, the word remediation is used, and the students who go there need to be better prepared. And, and it sounds like we're trying to get a handle on it. We are. Okay, that's the, good. The we are doing well over here in our, in our county. The intervention at the elementary level is where it should yeah. be. Yeah. Plus, yeah. we got that new literacy grant that we went after, right. and that, that yeah. is, that's coming into effect. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're, they start next week with yeah. the, uh, the program. May uh, I ask a question relative to the Smarter Balance Assessment? I was reading on the DOE website, and I wanted to know that when we took a Smarter Balance this year, what classification did we take it in? Were we part of the field test? the scientific portion, because there's various, uh, according to them, there is an actual chart in there that shows various uh, degrees, I, I want to say, or plans and areas of smart balanced assessment testing. And in, there were so only so many taken for the scientific portion. Uh, there were only so many taken for the purpose of data collection. And then they had an overall uh, classification known as the field test. And it did say if you were part of the field test, although it didn't give a list of the schools, that the students would also be taking the West test too. And I was just wondering, were we part of that field test? Will the students also, did they also take the West test too this year? Uh, we did so not we had to be test under test another test. category. We did not take West, take West test too. Right. So I'm yeah. saying we had but to be under did, another category. Yeah. We did general summative assessment, and we did our requisite testing at this level in, in uh, uh, science grade 10 uh, that's required by the federal government. But we only did English and math. Only English and math? Yes, ma'am. We social studies and science. No, ma'am. The, 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 si the only science we did was the required grade 10, and it was not smarter balance. And so we, okay, so then we didn't do Because there isn't a smarter balance that's available for, for science at that level. I see. Okay, thank you. That's all and as soon as we can free up a, a recent lady to be here tomorrow that we bring her in. We've talked already when she gets a chance to come in and talk to you all about the smart spouse. Good. And give you, she's, she's excellent on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the biggest um, quest we have is to catch those those struggling kids. The younger that we catch them, the better mm -hmm. the results are going to be. I mean, yeah. it's unfortunate that we've probably got students down there struggling now that you hate to think about them maybe falling behind, but you know, for future generations, I, I believe you can't go wrong in, in putting those interventionists in there at a young age. Uh, I mean, uh, well, let me get to the other two that Dr. Armour is, and then we'll uh, get that problem right there. Yeah. The uh, emergency thing, we talked about that before. Uh, the people that I've talked to that can do this is telling me, the safety people, is we can't do anything and make a plan until the building's built so we can see the exit procedures, how we're going to do and where we're going to go with it. And then once this time next year, we should have a plan that will go along with our safety plan on, on the Redis. Okay. The truancy thing that you, you talked about, I told you before, we set up a committee, which I already met once. And I know you're interested, and I'd like to put you on that committee if it's okay with you, the truancy committee. I don't know if I can take any more on. I'll do everything I can. But okay. I, I agree with uh, what Mrs. Starkey said. When I read the paper, uh, it mentioned truancy of faculty. I could not believe that we have a problem. So here we get nailed for being one of the worst counties in uh, West Virginia. I, I just wonder if it's due to snow days or something else. And that people say, well, my golly, we're managing poorly. We're being singled out for truancy. All I'm interested in is let's get the truth out and correct it. Well, I'd want to know who the reporter was. Who's the reporter who wrote that article? Because not everything that we see is it's correct. It's true. But people, when they read it, if it's in a newspaper, they think it's correct. Well, I, I talked to the lady at the State Department today, and there, there's a couple concerns I had with her, and she voiced, but there is money right now that's going to be coming out, and we'll have to write a grant. 
and uh, it's coming out through the governor's office. So we will go after a grant to get yeah. full-time person to work here with with the truancy to uh, also. Uh, what Misty's saying, uh, we're looking right now, and it's the psychologist that we have here does yeah. a great job. And Good. matter of fact, we're, we're contracting with her uh, through Risa just to do psychology work. But we've been talking to her about maybe switching her also into uh, looking to help these these children out there That's coming awesome. here to check on them, to work with them, to figure out what they were. And I think she's pretty interested. Of course, I have to post it. And if we get somebody better than her, but she's pretty interested. And that's so that's something we're going to be looking at. So we should have a lot of this stuff together sometime in August when we come right. in. Hopefully by July we'll have some stuff together yeah. we can bring back and tell you exactly what we're doing. But the truancy will be meeting. And uh, we're, I got, I didn't know until somebody showed me that the Charleston Gazette. I didn't get any from the State it. Department, anything. It just showed up in the Charleston Gazette, and I, I didn't know what to say. But uh, we will be addressing the drone scene. We will come back. If we have to come back with a stronger policy, we will come back. I just don't understand how we can have a 97.6% attendance rate and a 50% truancy rate. Now, the lady told me today we had an 80%. According to Zoom, it was 97.6% yeah. attendance. I, I mean, I just want to see you pull it. I mean, that's, the, all, that's the data we're getting from the state, and that's what it shows yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think we all realize when we were in school, we were truant. Our parents took care of us. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and see, I question, too, because I don't, this 50% thing, you know, it's how many days they are absent. Did we have one student who was truant 20 days? You know, did we have one student who was truant 15 days? Uh, it cannot be that one half of our students were truant for greater well, than, what I is did. it, five days? Right, when, I did, to her, absence? when I did talk to her, uh, she did admit that there was some, the reporting, reporting, all counties weren't doing the reporting the same when way. The same some people were just doing it, and she's trying to get it together that everybody's going to report it the same way. Because I couldn't believe that the truancy officer, Ms. I believe it's Mrs. Stonecker, wouldn't have come to the board long before it ever hit 50%. She was standing with me when she, we got approached by the Charleston Gazette paper. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm sure she was shocked. Mm -hmm. Well, the principals, I bet you ask them. You don't have a 50% truancy rate of faculty. Do they'd be coming down on hard. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well I you got you got to realize, too, when over the years with the PEIA and everybody right. got to use their sick days to take that, sure. these younger teachers, they can't accumulate those sick days to go towards anything. So they, yeah, they, they, they take them. And you've got some people, and they'll say, I'm taking all my 12 days or my 15 days because I don't get paid for them and I don't get anything. Yeah. And again, you know, that's... You know, that's something, you know, you, you Yeah, it's just, and this is a situation that our system in the state has created. And I think with, with the students, I think we all understand we have a little cultural difference now. And, and I think that, again, not every kid's in a home where a parent knows where the, whether he's in school or not. So that's there right. are a lot of factors that go into it. I, I think probably the truancy rate's greater than we'd like. Mm -hmm. No, but it's not what the not report said. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not. Count, five counties are not reporting it the same way. You can come out with 55 They're, different in exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's all. And it was the same way several years ago with the bullying procedures. Uh, we were, I would, you know, might have been reporting it one way, another county might be. Yeah, yeah. we all shows that we might have the same 20%, and mm -hmm. yeah. other county might have 10%, but they right. have the same problems yeah. we have. It's right. the same way as the national statistics for the counties, the point of educational and statistics. Uh, we're not uh, complying with No Child Left Behind and never have, but yet that we're thrown against states who are. The statistics are combined. There is no way that we can say that that rating is accurate. Mm -hmm. So well, we come up with five every time. We're going to really look at the trend, too. I, I formed a committee, and Mrs. Starnes ahead of it, and then we'll come, come back with you, and there might be some policy changes or something that we have to do. But we're going to have to start at the beginning of the year right off the bat. But, but you're asking me if I want to be in the committee. That's completely out of my expertise. I, I, okay. I would prefer you put someone on it who's really qualified. You know, I, I, I can handle achievement statistics and things of that nature, but I wouldn't feel comfortable. You know, Mr. Devano, if you're looking for a citizen, let me say that Mrs. Starkey, as a four-year educator and a prior board member, might be someone you might want to talk to. That would be a good suggestion. Okay, anything else? I'd like to mention one more thing since we're uh, doing this in a very cordial, uh, civilized way. Uh, there still is uh, some concern in the community, 
here again, we go to the Charles and Gazette about the fund watch. Uh, people read that uh, here Gilmore County is singled out for a fund watch, and, and a, a member of the Board of Education has even decided we should somehow try to clean that up so the citizens here will not think we're mismanaging money. So I don't know how you'd handle it. But if, if it's erroneous reporting, which it probably is, some assurance should go to the public and say this is another example of bad reporting. What, what, what it is, there's several counties that are on fund watches, and Calhoun's one, and, and of course we're uh, doing a state takeover, so we're automatically one. Fayette County's already, all the funding and everything goes to Fayette County, so it wouldn't appear in the paper that they're on a fund watch because the state controls all their finances. Sure. But what it is, we get a report every year, every time, and they'll have questions where this goes, this goes, everything else like that. Move this money over here to make that look good, so we do that and follow them. Uh, that's basically what, what it is. It's all it is is how they, they how we got our money and they're watching our money and questioning when we do something and how we do it and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why we're on the fund watch because we're still partially under the state with finances mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But uh, it's just a watch. But there's several other counties that they're watching too. We're not the only one in, in the state. Oh, yeah. right. The state board reported that. That report was prepared by Joe Panetta. And Thomas Campbell. Uh, Thomas Campbell it to, one, it was redlined in there. Yes, uh, and Mr. Panetta brought that, and I did call Charleston and spoke with both of those people. Mr. Panetta sent me a report and explained that during Mr. Blankenship's last year, which was what, 13, 14, the, it, we had apparently had, and I believe it, a million dollar expenditure uh, that reduced the fund balance greatly in that year, and they were concerned. Yeah. And that's why they put Gilmer County on the fund balance watch. And it may, it will stay on the fund balance watch. And I think that's not a bad thing. I don't know why people think that's necessarily a bad thing. I'd rather have them watching mm -hmm. than wind up three years down the road like Calhoun and find out after three years, surprise, you're in the red, lay off your people, and uh, start trying to pay this, get your budget back on line. So, you know, I... I I understand why. I saw the report. I believe I sent a copy to all the board members. And uh, that's from what Mr. Campbell and Mr. Panetta, who prepared the report, told me that was their reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn. I'll make a motion. I take it the attorneys are not arriving for this executive session. There's no executive session. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw the discussion. I presumed it was no. for real estate. No, he wasn't. He's not coming. Okay, do we have I a motion? Sure. No. Okay. Then Sorry. to adjourn, do we have a second? Second. All right, we stay in the turn. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joe, for getting up the vending maintenance program. <laughs>